I'm not going to ask you about all the killings, but there was one specific that I wanted to ask you about. And if you could go into, uh, into detail, because I did hear it from another interview you did. And that was uh, Nikki Black. Yeah. Well, that was probably uh, up the biggest hit in the Colombo War. Now, there was another one that came later when they got Joe Scopo. But the war was pretty much over. That was more payback. Uh, and they were trying to negotiate and put the family back together. But some guys were never going to be able to get a pass. And he was one of them. But anyway, up to the point, <clears throat> none of the uh, higher ranking guys or real big names were getting hit. Uh, so anyway, this Nicky Black, he was a heavyweight. Mm. Been around a long time, big earner. And my Uncle Albert was on there on Avenue. I see. Okay. And he told my Uncle Albert that if my nickname was Butchie. Mm. If your nephew Butchie don't come over to our side, I'm going to kill him. Mm. So <laughs> this is my mother's brother. Somebody else in the club also heard it and told Carmine Sessa that he was targeting me. So he became our number one target now. And within a day or two, the lady, it might have been the next day or two days later, we're driving around and we spot him. But before that, I went to see my Uncle Albert that night when I heard it mm -hmm. from Carmine. And he told me, yeah. He said, I want you to be careful. And he looked at me and he said, don't you forget blood is sticking in water. In other words, I had nothing to worry about with him. If he knew anything, he'd tell me. And I knew that already. I mean, right. this is my godfather. We were in a very, we were both on thin ice having this conversation. Lucky enough, again, in context of life, we find Nikki Black. And uh, he was pulling up in front of his car service that he had a piece of our own. And we were actually looking at another club because we saw somebody's car outside, Funzi D. Mm -hmm. And we and I spotted him pull up. I had the binoculars. About a half a block away, I could see everybody walking in and out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So I got allergies, and uh, being in Florida, and I jog every day and stuff, I breathe it in and it kills me. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Mickey, uh, we spotted him as we pull up. He takes off. He starts driving away. Not that he was fleeing, but he starts driving around the block. Jim's following him close. He pulls up to another house. And this guy, Anthony, comes out and he hands him an envelope. But just as he's doing that, we pull up alongside Nikki. Now, we had a fake siren in the window, coffee cups, baseball hats. We were sort of looking, we wanted to look like we were law doing surveillance. I see. And I believe he had to think that was the case because when we pulled up, he never turned. And in a war, you don't let a car pull up alongside you. Yeah, right. I mean, we were looking at windows. In mirrors, had guns in our hands in the car, bulletproof vests on. You know, never would we not let a car roll up on us. He always left space in front of us. So anyway, I think he was sitting in the car and he probably looked over at his nephew and said, "They're rolling up. The law's coming." Something it had to be. Yeah. He right. never turned. <clears throat> so Greg had a rifle, and he was trying to turn, and at the same time he was hitting the clip, and he, instead of hitting the safety, he hit the the ammunition clip. So all the bullets started falling out. Wow. I had a shotgun. Mm -hmm. okay, that was what I used. And I leaned out the window. I got within inches of the back of his head. He never turned around, and I blasted him. Wow. And, uh, yeah. It was, and it was, it, it, it sent shockwaves through the Vic Arena side because he was uh, next in line for Council Yeah. Wow. In Vic Arena's eyes. Wow. And to me, driving away, you know, I never, you know, the pre-war things I was involved with, I'll never, I'll never, I'll never forgive myself. For. Okay. During the war, it was kill or be killed. I got you. This one was, I drove away almost feeling satisfied. Mm -hmm. This guy threatened that he was going to come and get me. Mm -hmm. I got him first. Right, right, right. You know, survival. 